Welcome to Black Magic at NAB 2023. Uh, my name is Simon uh, and we are showing the new Resolve 18.5. Uh, so it's had a lot of new feature updates uh, and it was launched just this morning in beta format. So we have a new audio AI feature called classifications. So when you import um, media into the project, Resolve is already working on it. So as you can see from sort of within the interface here, Resolve can identify something that's a video clip, but also what I can actually do is I can get Resolve to kind of analyze these clips for a little bit more audio detail. So if I select them all and I right click, I have an option that says audio classification analyze. And what Resolve will now do is it will go through and using the neural engine, it will go through and analyze the clips and decide what might be dialogue, what might be crowd noise, what might be a car or a bus. Um, so there's a huge amount of things it can identify. So at the moment, as you can see, it's just simply going through analyzing the footage. Uh, and eventually what you'll find is these collections down here will start to populate. So one, as you can see, once the analysis is finished, I can click on the dialogue and Resolve has sort of picked out what it thinks the AI's identified what's dialogue. So things like pieces to camera, it now knows it's dialogue. So again, as a user, you don't have to go in and search for lots of interview clips. The AI function can find these things for you. So the other thing we've got up our sleeve, well, we've got a couple of things up our sleeve, but one of them is the neural engine text-based editing. So with an interview clip like this, what I can actually do is I can simply right click on the clip and say transcribe audio. So again, what it will do is it will take a look at the clip, analyze it and transcribe all the audio for this clip. And there we go. So as you can now see, I've got the transcript. And what I can then do is I can actually edit from this. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of a sort of shaky intro, but I want it to say where he goes, hey, I'm Robin Larson, I'm gonna give you a tour around my car. What I can actually do is just simply click and drag over this section. And as you can see, when I let go, it marks the in and out point in the viewer, and then I can simply hit append, and it will append the clip into the timeline of just the section I've marked. You can also search in this window, so you've got a search box to search for things, and also you can export the script as a text file for use elsewhere. Yes, the plan is to do other languages. What we wanted to do with the beta, you know, it is in beta, so what we wanted to do is just get English working first and get that running smoothly. Um, but then obviously the plan is to span out into lots of different other languages because not everybody speaks English. So the other sort of very clever AI audio tool is the ability to create subtitles from timeline audio. So again, I've just got a couple of interview clips in here. What I can actually do from within my timeline menu, I can say create subtitles from audio. And what Resolve will do is it will simply analyze my timeline and create subtitles, create a subtitle track and place them at the correct point in time in my timeline. So once the analysis is finished, we should end up with subtitles for our interview track. Yes, we do. So we have the new Relight, um, and it's very clever because it sort of works in three dimensions. It has a depth map to it. So you can basically have a surface map for the light, and therefore it gives a scene much more natural light. So as you can see, I've already applied the Relight in here. And if I say, turn on the Relight Map Preview, as you can see, it gives me a preview of where the lighting is going to hit. So as you can see, anything that is sort of whiter will get the light, anything that's darker won't. 
I can move the direction. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to move the directional light over to the right of this shot, um, just so we can see, sort of see that the light is behind our two subjects. If I then turn off the relight map preview, now what I can do is I can use my normal color controls to kind of light the edge of this shot. So what I can do with this, I can maybe just push the gamma up a touch. Push the gamma up a little touch. Come on. There we go. And also what I can do is maybe just give it an idea that there may be a little bit of sun behind our subjects. I can push that into the shot. And as you can see, the light looks really natural. So again, as you can see, I can toggle that on and off. And because it has sort of a volume map, so the light bounces off certain areas, it's much more realistic than, say, just doing a simple sort of window uh, for relighting a scene. Yeah, the cut page as well has had some important updates because if you think Resolve is now not just a desktop system, it's also iOS. We run it on the iPad. Uh, and the cut page lends itself to being on the iPad um, because of its interface and how you can quickly turn around edits. But as you can see from the interface within the cut page, there are a number of new buttons in here. So as you can see, I've got things like timeline actions. Um, I've got sort of editing controls. I've got simple trimming controls as well. And these buttons are called timeline options, timeline actions, and edit actions. So we've done some really kind of very straightforward things. So for example, if I simply want to trim a clip to the start of a playhead, you can see we've got these new uh, smart uh, indicators now that flash to show you which part of the edit you're going to adjust. And from here, I can do a very simple trim start to playhead, and it will trim the start. If you notice what happened there, the timeline rippled. And again, what people said about the cut page, we've listened to feedback. People also want the ability to kind of trim and leave gaps. So there is a new ripple button in the cut page. So if I turn the ripple off and maybe do another trim now whereby I want to maybe trim the end of this clip. So again, I can actually select that. And within the edit menu, I can say trim end to playhead. You can now see it will actually leave a gap rather than moving everything along with it. Again, from within these other edit menus, you've got the same create subtitles from audio that you have in the edit page. You can detect scene cut detect from this menu. So if you have a flattened off QuickTime file, it can be easily chopped into different scenes. And also, we've kind of just looked at the interface a little bit as well. So things like the video only and audio only edit buttons have been sort of tidied up into the corner just to tidy up the interface. But again, with the cut page, there's just these little updates that have really kind of pushed the cut page on again. Yeah, so it's again something we've added in 18.5. You've got the ability to stabilize multiple clips. So what I can do is if I select numerous clips in here, and then in my inspector, if I hit stabilize, it will go through. And as you can now see, it says analyzing one of three clips. So all these three clips now have stabilization applied to them. So one of my favorite hidden features, and it's not really been talked about very much, but it's the ability to add keywords to markers. So you can sort of mark your favorite sections of clips. So for example, what I can do is I can take a clip in here, and these cars start to go over a lot of jumps. So what I can do is I can sort of mark in, in and out point where the cars go over a jump. And then if I right click, I can say convert in and out duration, in and out to duration marker. Now if I take a look at this as a list view, as you can see, I've got a marker in here. But now when I select this sort of sub clip, it gives me the option to add a keyword. So I can call that jump, and it should add the clip to um, the keyword. So now what I can do is go back to the same clip. 
So it's that clip there. Uh, and again, so every time the cars start to go over jumps, so again, I can play through this and there's going to be another jump just there. Again, I can mark an in and out point. Again, convert to duration markers, open up the same marker, apply the same keyword, and it will continue to appear in the smart bin. And the great thing about that is you can use it for multiple clips. So instead of ending up with lots and lots of subclips, you've just got one smart bin with all your markers in. And for me, that's a really quick and easy way of sorting out your clips.